So a word of caution, this review is going to be a bit biased. My name's Taps, this is 0102 Studio, and this is a review of the Q Acoustics QM20 HD bookshelf powered speaker. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing because I'm new to this channel. So this review is going to be a little bit biased in that I love Q Acoustics speakers, specifically the 3000i series. And this speaker, the QM20 HD bookshelf speaker, physically mirrors the 3020i in shape and size and or build of the speaker itself. Uh, so going into it, I kind of knew that I was going to like this speaker no matter what. And if you don't want to watch the whole video, yeah, I really like it. It sounds great. It's touted as a full-blown high-resolution music system. It's, in their words, the most powerful, immersive, and convenient way to enjoy music, movies, and gaming sound anywhere in the home. This speaker carries over the same industrial design cues from the 3000i series. Deep cabinets, rounded corners, flat-style binding posts, and rear-firing bass reflex ports. Like the 3000i series, the M20 features P2P point-to-point -point cabinet bracing, and it's essentially a powered version of the 3020i, with some DSP thrown in to help you, the user, augment the sound characteristics depending on how you place them. Like most speakers in this category, one speaker is the mains or powered master control speaker, and the other is connected via supplied speaker cable. Interestingly, the back of this control speaker has a switch allowing you to set it as either the left or right channel, which is pretty handy if you're kind of constrained on where you have power outlets or, you know, you want to keep cables hidden. So I did something stupid. I typically don't read user manuals when I first set up a pair of speakers, like, ah, I know how to set this up. And there's two switches on the back of the speaker. One is for the EQ and one is to denote which speaker is left or right. I, uh, I thought there were both EQ switches and I was trying to get the left or right one to sit in the middle where I like the EQ to be and I just couldn't figure it out <laughs> until I looked at the back of the speaker and I realized I was just an idiot. So it pays to look at the back of the speaker. There's a power knob that sits on top of the control speaker. It's framed by an LED light. The light changes color indicating which source is selected, Bluetooth, optical, analog, and USB. On either side of the button is a volume up and down button. One strange thing is the speaker doesn't remember what setting you were in when you were listening last time. So when you turn it back on, it just defaults to, I think it's analog or something. It's kind of a pain, you have to, but you know, it's one, it's a first world pain in the ass. It's not, it's not really a pain. The built-in amplifier is 130 watts, 65 watts times two of digital power. The 22 millimeter tweeter is decoupled to minimize any internal vibrations that could affect the audio, while the 125 millimeter mid bass driver and rear firing bass reflex port in each speaker support the mid and the bottom end. Like the 3020i's, the M20 HD is pretty deep and that helps support like that bigger, fuller sound. This speaker features all the connections that you would hope to have in a powered speaker. Optical in, analog in, a mini jack, USB type B, Bluetooth Aptex HD up to 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. You also get a sub out. The remote again is pretty awesome. I've mentioned this in the Fluence review and I'm gonna mention it here again. Uh, the remotes for these powered speakers kick the crap out of the ones that are found on integrated amplifiers most of the time. Like most of those ones are big, clunky, ugly remotes. And these remotes are pretty. They're small, they're easy to use, and they're functional. Make them more like this. These are awesome. The remote's pretty simple to use. It's It features power, volume, skip forward and backwards, source. One omission though is like DSP EQ. I really like that in the Fluent speaker where you could control bass and treble. The speaker is also available in white, black, and walnut. My review sample arrived in classic black matte, which is more of a dark gray matte and it's fairly elegant. 
The speaker is a little more upmarket in price compared to something like the Fluence AI61. While the specification seems fairly close, it's really build quality and the premium look and finish of this that sort of separates it. While we're on the topic of the Fluence, one thing that bugged me about that speaker was the fact that it didn't include a speaker grill. Well, the HD20 has speaker grills, but in this case, they can't be removed. One of the things I like about Q Acoustic speakers is the fact that they're pretty. Not being able to remove the grill on a Q Acoustic speaker so I could look at the drivers, uh -huh. kind of a bummer. I wonder if this is a cost savings method where, you know, to keep the price down, they didn't want to finish the front and just kind of cover it all up. I don't know. Uh, maybe they're thinking that the general user will never take the grill off or they've optimized it for sound with the speaker grill on. Who knows? Yeah, I kind of wish I could take it off. So how's it sound? It sounds great, right? Surprise, surprise. I like the 3020 i speaker and the speaker was going to sound relatively the same. I think it's actually a little warmer or meatier sounding. I think that's mostly because of how I have the EQ set. Uh, but if I have a chance to plump the bass on something, I'm going to do it. So there's that. A sub's required if you want to go really deep. I mean, it's got a deeper cabinet and it helps with the sound stage and the DSP helps augment the EQ a little bit. But if you want everything to sound balanced, uh, you'd probably have the switches set to middle or up. And then you'd probably want to get a subwoofer if you're a bass head like me. They're made for a smaller room, like an office or bedroom. They've pretty much promoted that in their materials. But I will say in my living room, I got a pair of 3020i set up paired with a 3090ci, their center channel speaker, without a sub or surrounds, which kind of bums me out. But I'm not really left wanting for more volume. Uh, they fill the room pretty well. And so uh, I had no doubt that the QM20 HD would fill the room as well. So I actually set them up next to the 3020i's on either side of my TV to see how they sounded. And sure enough, they did fill up the room. So uh, yeah, you can put them in a larger room. Just know that, you know, if you're looking for maximum impact, maybe you'd want to get a bigger speaker if you have a bigger room. But if you put these in a small-ish size room or you're trying to fill up a condo, you'd be fine with these. These are good. Q acoustics made sure to include a gaming setup in their promo photography. It makes sense as powered speakers are great to add to any desktop. I don't game myself, uh, but I have these set up on my workstation for day-to-day -day listening. And so long as you're not after like a flat response from something like a studio monitor, like my Yamaha HS8, you're in for a treat. Having a pair of fairly powerful bookshelf speakers at your listening position is especially nice if you want to take a break from work or you know, just taking a video or a movie or something like that. These speakers are capable of blowing your hair back and immersing you in sound. If you're one of the six people that made it through my Fluence AI61 review, then you know it's my Peloton speaker of choice. And so I took the chance of uh, switching out the uh, AI61s for the M20s to see how they fared. Given the Peloton's lower Bluetooth volume output, the M20 HD was pretty good. Like it was able to fill the space a little bit, but it, it couldn't go too loud just because it was limited by what Peloton was willing to give it as far as volume. Up in our living room is where we have the Q Acoustics 3030i bookshelf speakers. And I paired the Cambridge Audio CXN V2 streamer to the M20 HDs for streamer duties and uh, the QB12 subwoofer for a bit of extra thumb. Our sectional couch places our listening position about eight feet back from the speakers, which sit about, uh, about a, a little bit above ear height on the sideboard. I found this to be the most ideal setup for the QM20 HDs and I also think that most people will probably have these set up in a similar fashion. As with the other speakers in the Q Acoustics own 3000i series, the sonic character is fairly relaxed while maintaining a decent amount of oomph. It's not neutral or clinical at all, it's just easy, it's really easy to listen to.
if modern day powered bookshelf speakers existed in my younger days, it would have been my go to speaker. I mean, like you could do pretty much everything with them, and like they're fairly light that I could bring them from room to room. But if I only had one room and I needed a pair of speakers to do everything, ah, no brainer. Just get these. In the powered speaker category, there's seemingly a lot of other speakers that you can buy or audition up against the M20 HD. Uh, specifically, the Fluence AI61 that I just reviewed on this channel, it retails for significantly less than this one. However, I will say, uh, while I... I can't really say that one sounds better than the other, they sound different but and the same at the same time it's really just the build quality of the speaker that really puts it over that edge uh the m20 hd is just significantly prettier than the uh ai61 is that worth the upgrade or expenditure in money that's really up to you and if you're asking that question then you know buy the cheaper one but if you value looks shelf appeal, aesthetics, maybe this is something uh, that's worth auditioning. I put it in the same category as something like the Kef LSX or the Kanto Tuck. While I haven't heard those speakers, they're both fairly pretty, and this one is too. If you're on the market for an upgrade to sound, you don't wanna have a mess of wires or a bunch of different components and just a pair of speakers next to your TV, yeah, another great option. Um, and if you value aesthetics and build quality, uh, yeah, it's worth it. I absolutely love these speakers. I think they're really well made. I think they look pretty. And um, yeah, I don't want to give them back.